Here we go. Boom. All right. And then you introduce everybody, Brian. Let's go. I think we are live at this moment. It's looking like we're live now. I think we're good. Check on it, Sam. Make sure we're good. Yes, we are good. I see us. We I are see there. All of us. You can see the light. All right. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Monday night. Get some fire live with uh, me and Sam Smith, my brother from another mother, and tonight's special guest, Brian McKintrick, member of the Goon Squad, Apex Goon Hello. Squad. For those of you who don't know about the Goon Squad, that is a group of uh, guys inside of Apex, the group that uh, we belong to uh, down in Dallas, that um, basically um, formed this kind of brotherhood, uh, like-minded guys, and they support each other, and they've grown into the syndicate. And now they're running their own event, or partnering with Apex on the next live. Coming up February 3rd, there are still tickets available if you want to find out more. Uh, we've been leading up into this with uh, Chris Whitehead and Mike Claudio and Thomas Keenan. And uh, these are all Goon Squad members that are uh, coming you know, to speak to you, and these guys will be up on stage. So if you're liking what you hear here, here on this show, come check out uh, Goon Squad Live. And uh, Brian's one of the first people I met when uh, I first went to my first Apex event at MDM. We went to a, a yeah. big steak dinner. And mm -hmm. uh, Brian was one of the first people I met when I got introduced to the Goon, Goon Squad. I got invited to the uh, dinner. And yeah, was, you and Jessica uh, came. Yeah. yeah me and yeah. Jess uh, crashed you guys' dinner, and that was a blast. And uh, <laughs> it was an eye-opening experience. I'm still, I'm, still sharing, I'm still sharing the show out. Still Sorry, sharing, yeah. Sam's still I'm sharing. Me, I promise. <laughs> sharing is caring, Sam, you know? So, is that right? <laughs> so Brian um, is big in the insurance world. Um, mm -hmm. He, uh, So he's... Um, I guess a trainer in the insurance world as far as sales training. Yep. Um, yep. He's uh, just opened his own, I guess, office. It was called it, with his own nineteen people working in this, uh, in this yeah, just, organization. Yeah. We'll call it. Yeah. And, just um, added a group. Yep. Just added a group. new uh, sales group, I guess you'd call it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he just uh, enrolled a uh, mentorship with uh, one of the big uh, entrepreneur trainers out there. So that's some big news for him. And uh, he's just been killing it. Um, you know, we talk about a story of uh, here in the in the uh, podcast and all that stuff out there. Brian started um, basically as a low key, not on social media, and you know, kind of, and built it from scratch. And uh, mm -hmm. just wrote a book. Uh, have you seen it? It ain't rocket surgery. Check it out. It's on yep. Amazon. Um, all about yep. um, sales. Um, not making it harder than it really is. We're really keeping it simple. And uh, so, Brian, tell us more about you. What uh, what makes Brian tick? Yeah, awesome. Um, so, yeah, the Apex over the last, um, give or take, two years has been a major catalyst in a lot of the things that are going on with the, uh, in a personal personal mindset, uh, personal aspect, as well as uh, in the business world. So, um, it, it's, it's amazing what, if you're willing to do the work that others are not, once a blueprint is laid out in front of you, it's amazing what you can actually uh, actually accomplish. And things that you thought were much more difficult than they actually are. That's mm -hmm. kind of like the title of my book. Um, got to, you know gets into that. Things are not, not as quite complicated as you might think if you really break them down to the fundamentals. But really, sickly, if someone lays out a blueprint ahead of you, makes it even makes it even more so. You can, we said, you know, it's yeah. uh, you can't reinvent the wheel. A business is business. I've been mean, working that yeah. way for you know hundreds of years, and it's really just mm -hmm. re you know, there's obviously techniques and new technologies that come into play, but it's basic business. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think it also comes down to your personality. If you're willing to let go of um, let go of the inhibitions of mm -hmm. how you come how you come across, as long as you can you know properly communicate, properly convey yourself, do it in your own voice and come across natural that way. That goes a long way. 100%. There's yeah, there's so many people in social media. There's so many people uh, in business online. There's no lack of clients. You just find the people that will re resonate with you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I like that. That's true. You um, wind up uh, connect it's a re relationship game, right? So uh, we build relationships and and, and being authentic, I think, is the key to that. There's so many people that are that are faking it out there, and it just comes off cheesy, yep. you know. Well, uh, people see things like um, you know, like Andy Priscilla or Sean Whalen, in, you know, in the, the entrepreneur space, Ed Milet, and they think, "Wow, I love those guys. I love I love what they say." But they fall in love also with how they say it, and they try to come off come off with the same delivery that's not theirs. It, it falls flat. You can yep. instantly tell when someone is not using their own. Mm -hmm. uh, their own voice. Yeah. 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 
Boy, it would be really hard to beat Andrew Frisella. That guy works out like a <laughs> yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And then, yeah, I mean, if, if if you want to catch somebody like that, you got to go chase him, man. <laughs> uh, the yeah. the thing Apex, the thing Apex gave me was the framework. It, it gave me that framework and that accountability and that that yeah. those people to chase. You know. Mm -hmm. it, what, about, yeah. what about you? Oh, I I I see an Apex the the blueprint. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the build your machine. Uh, series of budget machine pieces are literally just a blueprint of how to do those in each individual steps. There literally is a map of, okay, this is how a, a podcast is constructed. This is how a book co comes together. <laughs> I just got tagged in the group um, before we went on here. I'm replying to a guy in a message. And um, ironically, the, the people that they, this guy tagged were all the were Goon Squad people. But he's asking how to, how, do you, how to write a book, like a little bit more details than just how to write a book. But we want more details on it, and literally, it is a, f a framework. I never mm -hmm. saw myself, you know, as an author. I thought those, you know, that's for things like Covey and Ziegler and Tom Hopkins. But <laughs> um, when I got into Apex and saw how it was done, I go, oh, okay, well, I can do that. I can put those steps together, and sure enough, you, you release a book, and then with the support of the group, and once again, the blueprint of how to do it, and working with a good editor, it becomes a bestseller. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, Jason Grabeel released his book today. Yeah, so saw that come out. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to read that one. Yeah, yeah, I haven't I, checked his stats yet, but uh, once again, it's another piece in the in the uh, in the puzzle. I bought it. I bought it. Yeah, yeah. six six dollars. How can you not? I yeah, mean, come you on. can't beat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Cool. I can drop ten copies. No problem. Yeah, six bucks or so. Um, but it it becomes a it becomes just a norm to be in the bestseller space and. Uh, I think a, another part of Apex is that people, you guys have definitely done this, but you find, um, and this is what the Goon Squad is about, you, you find people that just click with you. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have been doing this a while. I, I see the episodes. I see what y'all putting together. So you guys are literally clicked as, as brothers. Like, hey, I like you. Do you really like me? Cool. No, 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 no. We clicked once. He won't let me leave. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it, it, just, it just comes to finding people... Um, you know, there's a lot of fun that happens because you're you're making friends. But I I, I tease the guys that uh, we're all delightfully twisted, and in a way that resonates with the other five people. No, it's you know, listen, work is uh, work is hard, and it's you know, if you're not having fun, what's the point, right? So if you can yeah, if you can laugh about it, and you can push each other, and you can kind of you know, give each other a little crap about stuff, and uh, it, it makes us all work harder, right? It all. If I see Sam's yeah. like, oh, I just did this, I'm like, man. Let me do something now. It's like you, you got that constant that. drive that, that pushes you to, to – there's a comp, there's natural competition amongst your peers, you know, and it's well, like, you know, well, should I take a nap or should I go do some work today? It's like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it comes to um, – despite the amount of fuckery that happens when you get people together like that, um, it, it comes to be there you, – you don't want to let the, let the other guys down. Exactly. You know, they're, they're, there's days I've got, you know, I get up at 5 a.m. now every day, and there's days that, that the alarm goes off despite how many hours I sleep. The alarm's still, alarm's still there. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I wake up, and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do a workout. Oh, I don't want to get up this early. And, I, and it, I have a brief glimpse in my head. I, I mean, I know Drewby's out running at 4 a.m. Um, you know, I, I know the guys are going to be in the gym before 6. I'm just like, oh, okay, i got to get up and do my thing. Yeah. I don't want to I don't wanna let the guys down. Mm. You know, you know, Brian, you're riding at dawn like that. That's, you know, it's, that, that's, uh, it's, it's tough it, in this weather. It's tough. <laughs> I know, right? But that's inspirational to people. It really is. Uh, but when you have a brotherhood like that, um, you know, brother and sisterhood with an apex, I see other people really jive in too. Um, you don't want to let that person down. You don't want to be the one that's like, oh, these are five guys working out and I'm not. You don't. You know, these are five guys writing a book and I'm not. These are five guys. You know, whatever it is. So that that yeah. that. There's a, um, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah, I like it. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, that's where this ride came from. You know, I was watching everyone get up and early and doing stuff. And honestly, I'm not a gym rat. I just, like, it's just boring to me. I actually like the CrossFit like Marks because it's, it's exciting yeah. to go there and lift weights mm -hmm. and put them down. It just, it just literally kills me. <laughs> But um, but to get jump on a bike and go for a ride, that's that's I was doing that a lot for seventy five hard. So yeah, uh, this kind of was like an, a you know continuation. And I was let me do something big and be accountable and 
And now, except people reach out to me if they don't, if I don't go on early in the morning, you know, sometimes I got to do something in the morning, I ride in the afternoon. Usually it's in the morning, yeah. but sometimes if I got a meeting in the city early, I just not enough time to do it. Sure. And uh, when I go on late, people are like, hey, where are you? What's going on? Everything okay? Because everyone's getting so used to it now. It's neat. So, like, you don't want to let anyone down. Like, I got to literally do it every day because people are counting yeah. on me now, you know? So it's uh, uh, yeah, accountability um, partners, you know? Whether you like it or the, not. <laughs> yeah, the, the right kind of people will hold themselves to their commitments. Um, you, you know, uh, you guys dropped the Zoom link and then I had to, oh, okay, I hope, hope, hope I make it in time because, <laughs> no, no, seriously, I was traveling today. I was like, well, I hope I make it in time because, um, you know, I made that commitment. I'm not going to yeah, let yeah. you guys down. I, I don't want to sit there and go, oh, shit, Sam, oh, shit. Brian, I, I'm not going to be able to make it because of whatever. But and I thought you guys, you guys probably would have understood. But on the flip side, it's like, then I put you guys out. I put you guys in a position like, crap, I got to go find somebody. And, you know, it, it wouldn't be as sexy as Brian McKittrick. So what are you going to do? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to match, you know. That's why you can't replace that, you know. All right. So, yeah, yeah. Um, good stuff. it is. But, yeah. yeah there, there's, it's a subtle amount of pressure that uh, is helpful, incredibly helpful. Yeah, no, it's uh, like I said, when you have that brother, and you have for people to bounce ideas off, kind of private ideas, like, hey guys, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? Right, you know, that's a good idea. Right. That's stupid. You know, you know, it won't work. You know, but it's people that you count on to give you their honest opinion. You know, don't tell me what well, I want to hear. Tell me that I like yes. that, or no, that ain't gonna work. Why don't you do it like this instead? You know, you get that brainstorming idea of it really it develops ideas quickly. Absolutely. Um, yeah, those kind of people that would li literally give you feedback, not to not to be brutal but feedback to be um to be honest and know what know what you need to hear um so i, I recently very and i say recently uh as of thursday just added a um, personal mentor coach not a business side but an actual personal to help me with uh family friends <clears throat> family friendships um faith especially you need so to have to deal with those friends in the group you needed someone to <laughs> Uh, the, yeah, help me, uh, help me help with me, these guys. Help me cope with these people. Um, so uh, right, that's, I, a, that's a sound bite. Somebody take a slip. <laughs> take a marker for me. Thirteen minutes in. <laughs> um, but I, I approached this. I approached this person because a, it's someone my son looks up to incredibly. But um, uh, it, it was a something that just I felt a spark. Like oh, like I, I'm resonating with this person. So I, I asked him. I was like, do, do you do any one-on-one -on -one stuff? I know you have a mastermind, but do you do any one-on-one -on -one stuff? And he's like, he's like, man, I'm very, very selective, but yes, I do. So he's like, you know, hit me up on uh, Instagram DM. So I sent him a message and we had some like, you know, very much a um, uh, business E type of thing. Like, you know, what are you looking for? Here's what I do kind of thing. And I went to the guys, um, I got, uh, I, I text Claudio. I was like, Hey, uh, I know you're coached by, he's in another realm. Uh, he has a personal mentor coach too. Um, how does that go? What do you guys tell you? What do you guys talk about? Here's, here's, who, I'm, here's who I've approached. And he, he gave me some advice. And then with this person, that's a, this person that's incredibly selective, I'm now just the fourth person that he works with one-on-one, -on -one, just number, I'm number four. And um, I, I went to, to Chris and Thomas and I said, hey, uh, I've, I've asked this person to be a personal mentor coach. I want to give him more information about me. Would you mind doing a quick, you know, cell phone video about what it is like working with me? And both of those guys did it within hmm. moments, moments. So I was able to send that uh, along with my marketing coach, who's another Apex executive member. Um, and you know, would you mind doing that? So I was able to send three videos for people that A, have worked with me and B know me more personal. So that just kind of, that very much put it over the top of this awesome. person go, okay, he's getting a more complete package of what it would be like working with me. It was important for me and I resonate with that person, but I wanted to give more information about it and think about, um, you know, I, I know you guys both have worked with people one-on-one. -on -one. Think about how, how cool that is. It's like a resume, if you will. Yeah. Can you imagine it's, 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 a, a, yeah. it's a live resume. It's cool. Yeah. Can you imagine as coaches, if we were like, okay, yes, I want your money, but on the flip side, it's like I also want to know want to know you're going to do the work. But to be able to, oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. some, some to, hiring hoops for a coaching program. Yeah, yeah, to be able to really quick, you know, and it, it's it's it was three people that I or four people that I kind of consulted with the whole thing, but it's like, uh, 
the cool thing is I know I probably could have gone deeper if he just said, give me five people like, okay, cool. I'll go, go find, you know, other, my, my apex executive coach and two other goons or whatever it is. So um, it's cool to be able to do that on the flip side. They wouldn't have done it had I not done the work. Mm. Well, you know, I think that's most important with any coaching program, mm -hmm. any book you read, anything you do. I mean, we all read it and then it goes on the shelf and, you know, kind of maybe you did 1% of this, you know, as you're reading, you're like, I got to do this. And then life gets crazy and you move on. And, yeah. you know, um, I think, uh, and I think a lot of the coaching programs get blamed for, oh, they didn't do anything for me, but you didn't do the work. So if you mm -hmm. didn't do the work, it wasn't the coach's yeah. fault, you know, and I think that's a big problem. I think that's part of, um, the nice thing about Apex is everybody's breaking each other's balls to do the work. Like, do the work, do the work, do the work, do the work. <laughs> and you constantly, yeah. like, shit, I got to do the work, you know? Because like I said, we're trying to run our businesses, we're trying to run our lives, we're dealing with all kinds of stuff, and mm -hmm. we're building our machine at the same time. And yeah. um, I've actually, well, I have another Apex accountability partner on Build Your Machine that every Wednesday mm -hmm. we have a meeting set up and say, okay, where are you this week? Like, let's go, let's keep building. And, yeah. you know, as another accountability partner to... Hey, like, you know, this is something that we need to do together. Like, you know, you need to be pushed. I need to be pushed. Let's push each other together. And every Wednesday we got a standing meeting. Like, you better be ready mm -hmm. for it. And, well, I, the, the, even, the, yeah, those little things can be, can further push you along. Cause you know, you got to get on the meeting with whoever that is. Exactly. And like, man, I, if I don't, if I haven't done the work, then I got to answer to so-and-so. And it's not like you're going to get in trouble or your hand slap, but you're going to know for a whole week until the next call you didn't do it. And um, I, I think with Build Your Machine, people, one misconception is the, the whole point of that is, to, is a, is a stair-stepping effect. And you don't have to, it's not designed to be done in big chunks. Now, when you see a video, you know, of like John Hiley talking about sales funnels or, you know, Ashton Shanks talking about, uh, Facebook ads or Arnie talking about Facebook groups. One misconception also is that you have to be the one to physically touch it. And you don't, mm. if your business is scaled to the point of like, okay, well, I'm not going to personally create a Facebook ad. You don't have to do that. You can go in a employ somebody or B find somebody within the group to help you understand it. Or if you do want to be the one to touch it. Um, it took a minute to figure that out. That was a big real. And I, it, it, it really did. It really, yeah. I, sh I struggled in the beginning with building a machine. because I was doing everything myself. Mm -hmm. like and it's only over time now that yeah we put out a, a shitload of content but i got a team like right you know when i first started to build my machine it was do this do that do this do that and it was just hours and hours and hours of shit mm -hmm. that i was trying to learn and do myself um and we don't do it as good as someone that does it every day you know? no no yeah me and sam just but, uh started working like, with william Hyder about you know facebook ads and stuff like that for mm -hmm, legion mm -hmm. and could I figure it out myself? Yeah, I read about it, and can we do this? And even my CRM yeah, I that I use, he's running my CRM for me right now. Like, mm -hmm. like that's Adam. That's off my plate now. Like, he just calls me up and says, "Here, here, someone's ready to buy a house." Like, yeah, rather than me I sitting spent, there every day and going through it, and it's not productive for me. That's what he does. Let no, him do it's it. Not. You know, I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars running Facebook ad campaigns, affiliate marketing, all that traffic arbitrage, all of it, and. It's not worth my time now to sit on the front end of that. I need to hire people to move that stuff into my business so I can right. be doing a thousand dollar an hour stuff. You know, it keeps you getting exactly. overwhelmed. You know, we get overwhelmed. We're trying to do the marketing. We're trying to do the accounting. We're trying to do the sales. Or you know, it's like sure. you can't do it all. Like you can't. Yeah. And you know, we all try to, and we all oh, I'm going to save a save a dollar but lose a hundred. You know, well, that happens all the time. Yeah, I saved a dollar doing it myself, but and then peace of mind. Like I found, like you know, you burn yourself out when you're trying to do everything. And then you don't want to do anything. Like, you know, you're trying to do everything, you get burned out, and you don't want to do anything. So by free giving it to someone and watching it operate, yeah, it costs money, but then the return is 10 times what it would have been. But yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're the specialists in, 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 what yeah. you, in what they're doing. Unless you really enjoy or want to learn it, um, you, you don't have to be the one to actually touch it. Especially if some of those, especially some of those things that are actually are the mechanical side, the, the CRM side, the ad spin side, the systems and technology that's mechanical pieces uh so what i was doing in 2020 on the first version uh that ryan had put out where he's doing literally all the videos or almost all the videos yeah you got the first uh, one right yeah yeah I did on the first uh, yeah well I, yeah I, well um i meant sorry the um the first machine. build your machine yeah build the first build your machine, machine version yeah. was ryan is I, I did find someone like that this person has unfortunately uh passed on i mean i mean that literally he did pass away um, but that's where that I connected through our conversations 
you know, with Chris and Chris Whitehead and people that's like, okay, let me connect with this person. And we did those bolt on pieces there. Um, when I got into the executive level, you don't have to be an executive level to do this, but if I got an executive level, you know, my coach was able to make those other connections and find the person that you want to work with. That's the beauty of the, of the network is you see that all day long questions of, Hey, what do I, who can I connect yeah. with to do this? And boom, a conversation happens, a relationship happens. I just got a DM from a guy on asking me about book stuff. So Dude, cool, I'll help you. Yeah. It's become a huge part of my job now, um, connecting yeah. people. I, I never yeah. thought anything of it. And now with the, the business network I've got, it's it, half of my day is just putting the right people in the right conversations. And then yeah. I, I get paid on the back of it, you know? Yeah. And the reach that we have is uh, today, someone was looking for fire extinguishers. I have a friend that has a factory in Colombia that makes fire extinguishers. He needs 500 hmm. fire extinguishers that let me connect you guys. You know, it's like, it's just like the randomest thing. I was just flipping through Entourage and, oh, look. I got someone for that. You know, it's like, what a random thing. Yeah. But I happen to know someone yeah. with a factory in Columbia, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what we do. We connect people, right? And, and then, you know, listen, it's good. It's goodwill, right? So if I can connect them, I help two of my friends out, you know, an Apex brother and another friend here that's not Apex that should be. And, yeah. um, you know, help two people out in my lives. And we say we give out to the universe, right? And then the universe will give it back to us at some point down the road, you know? Yep. Even outside of Apex, I, I connect people um, in to Apex members. For instance, I was, uh, I, I dropped my son off. I just got back from a trip in Cabo. And before that, I dropped my son off at his aunt's house in Alabama. And my brother-in-law were just talking about different things. And it's cool to have the conversations over the years have changed. But uh, we're talking about options. We're talking about crypto. He's been, we, he and I got into crypto it, it, through his, him spearheading it in our family, uh, like in 2012. So, um, wow. Yeah, so we always talk about crypto a little bit, but uh, we got into flip somehow into options I'm like, oh, hey, uh, or stocks and options I'm like, hey, yeah, I know a guy who does that. So, you know, Sam, you know, this, the trading syndicate, mm -hmm. I, I literally sent him the link. He signed up, boom, get started there. So now he'll make a bit of coin just because he's, he mentioned it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know a guy. It, it, but I can spend all day long going, I know a guy. It's, it, it ends up sounding funny over a long period of time, but <laughs> it's like you, you need something. I know a guy. That no, it does. I mean, I, life, I, can, I, yeah. I can walk into any restaurant in town, any bar in town, and, and know people. You know, uh -huh. it's, it's it's this 20 year thing. I mean, it's like Brian. How long have you lived there, dude? Well, my I mean, town has been here uh, yeah. 40 years. You just know everybody. And I'm involved in everything in the town. So, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, everywhere I go, I know someone. If, you're, if you need someone to do something in my neck of the woods, I got someone. And I've always done that just out of, I don't know, I like connecting people, I like helping people. Like, you know, if I can help one of my friends eat and I keep one of my other friends from getting ripped off, if I put the two of them together, you got a good job and they got to feed their kids, why not connect everybody? It's kind of just always the way yeah. I thought about it. And at some point, you know, if they need me for something and they come back around, you know, it, you know, it's just kind of the way it works. You know, if you're a giver, yeah. you're a giver and giver. And, uh, you know, it's just then you're kind of in the middle of everything, too, which yeah. you know what's going on. You know, mm -hmm. you know, well, here you can help and. I never, yeah. I never do it to make money. It's, you know, just, you know, there's a lot of people like, oh, put 10% on top for me. And that like goes on a lot. I'm like, yeah, well, just, just, uh, yeah. just refer me back. Like, that's not a genuine Yeah, I don't, I don't even do that. I get like, that. Yeah. A lot of like, people do that. Oh, listen, uh, <laughs> I'm going to, you know, use my guy, but I'll put 10% on top for me. And I'm like, yeah, I don't do that. Like, you know, listen, you know, use my friend and then hopefully they'll refer me back, you know, something else later down the road. It's well, it's like, a straight value exchange, exchange, man. It's a yeah. value yeah. exchange. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I... Yeah, I um, no, no, say, say years ago, I, I could think of one of some of the first um, me, for first times me receiving sales training. Uh, so I started in sales in 1999, and I could remember um, doing my, my, my career before I flipped into management or, or training people was uh, things like the power of that relationship in that regard. I remember uh, thinking to myself, wow, I've, I've got, I want to have a guy for like everything. Mm -hmm. Like, um, one of my early careers, I had to wear a, a suit during the winter months, six months of the year, and I had to wear, you know, shirt and tie, the, you know, no, no jacket. Jake from State Farm. Uh, the others, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I can tie the shit. Yeah, I can tie the shit out of a knot. <laughs> um, but you know, between you know, I had I was in cars and doing that. I always wore, I wore a tie for a long, long time, and as part of my you know day to day work uniform. But I always remember thinking, I, you know, I, I had a guy. Um, I lived in Tulsa where I went and get my, got my stuff. I had a guy, uh, I had a guy for my car. I had a guy for, you know, whatever you, you want to have a guy mm -hmm. and that that's a huge connectivity. It sounds old school, you know, especially like, you know, uh, 
you know, Brian, I'm thinking about you living up in New York. Um, you know, <laughs> I always thought, like, business. you know, if I if I was to say move to Texas, like yeah. I don't have a guy. Like here, I got it. I need something. I know where to go. Yeah, I want to go here for like yeah. you know. Everywhere I go, I go for this. Yeah. I go here for this. I know that one. I go mm-hmm. here. We hang out with this one, and but, then you go to yeah. a foreign place. But I also found that it starts happening quick. Like I already in mm-hmm. a couple times I've been to Dallas and our network there. I already start having people that I connect with. Yeah. That, oh, I'd go there for them and this for that, and you start but, building quick if you're a people person. Exactly. I used to love. Uh, that was my dad was a fan of the show Cheers. Remember Cheers? Yeah, yeah. Norm. And they walked in Norm. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, that yeah. that's like I like that idea. You know, yeah. the restaurant you want to go to once a week. Now, you know, Norm was a abusive drunk alcoholic. He was there like you know twenty four seven. That's why they did that. But yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but to go to a place once a week, or but you know, to go to to have it each. You walk into a place and it's like that's my guy. That's my yeah. my barber. I, is, yeah. is, Dude, is I got I got to share this. It's totally inappropriate. Um, <laughs> But, and, and I do it. I know I use this phrase to this day to describe what I do, but my dad always called it pissing on the lampposts. Um, you know how a male dog will walk around and just yeah. his territory. Totally. Yeah, yeah. My, my dad yeah. would always, he's like, if they, because this is like pre internet and stuff. And the way it would work back in England is if somebody knew you were going to be in a particular pub on a particular night of the week, that was your regular night there and they could find yeah. you there. Mm. And a lot of, a lot of working class males would have, two or three nights out of the week where they'd be a regular in this bar on a Thursday or this bar on a Friday or this bar on a Sunday afternoon and they'd do a, a ton of business there and um, the, the colloquialism for it was pissing on the lampposts and I, I still use that I know it's wildly inappropriate <laughs> for, for the subject matter but you yeah. know it kind of ties in well, yeah uh, but, but it still fits though it, it, yeah I, I love the idea of you know we, I didn't grow up with a close family so um I always like the idea of that building those relationships, even from a friendship point or, or a business relationship. So I, I, I very much have been in, you know, liking the, the I'm, I'm, I'm going to be their guy for this. And if you could need another guy for something, I want to connect you to my guy. Yep. You know, I like my, my, my suit guy, my barber, but yep, you know, whatever yep. it is, that, exactly. I love it. Have so, like, yeah. like, uh-huh. but it, you know, it used to be that the bars were the hubs for that. I, especially where yeah. I grew up. No, that is, that's um, a lot of my connections I, I have or someone I've met through the bar, right. you know, at some <laughs> but, point but in my now, life. Yeah. yeah, but now it's now it's all social media. So social media yeah. is in effect like it's like peeing on your own lampposts. Yeah. Which is where the which is where the building and machine comes in. So now mm-hmm. we circle all the way back around to it. Two posts to Facebook every day. What is it? One Facebook live every day. I've been lacking on that. Um, One post to a Facebook group, uh, two posts to LinkedIn. They're all like metaphorical digital lamp posts that you've got to run by and piss on every single day just to remind everybody who the top dog is. Is Yeah, and it's funny how you build that reputation over a period of time and you'll get tagged in in things. Um, When you get tagged for something, well, there's two. There's two times you get tagged. Is, is like someone says, "Hey, I need blank," mm-hmm. um, and you go, "Oh yeah, I know a guy for that." And the guy is, you know, whatever. So if someone says, "Yeah, I'm looking for a house in New York," I'm like, "Boom, I'm gonna tag Brian. I'm looking for a house, you know, in College Station or the area." I'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't see it. You wouldn't see that. But yeah. I'd be surprised. But hey, <laughs> but I would say, okay. Well, another part there is I, I need some video content. So the first thing I did, yeah. There yeah, I've got a relationship with Sam, so it's it's different. I just go, hey, here, here's what I need. But uh, if I didn't, and or if someone else was looking for a, you know some some video work in the north central North Texas area, I would say, oh yeah, Sam's the guy. But yeah. th- that's one way to get tagged. Another another way to get tagged is people make a post. Uh, for instance, it just happened. Um, a guy makes a post, a question about books, and he tags people that he think know that know that subject matter. Ooh. Um, and that is, is another subtle way to go, hey, I know you did this. I know you were successful at it. Yeah, Let me include you so yeah. I can get, yeah, so I can get help myself personally or someone else can help you. Um, that's within, in Apex, outside of Apex, when someone is tagging you, what they're really trying to do is get you to help, either help them or they also think that you can speak to and add more value in the comments there. Mm. But that comes from building your re- reputation uh, over time. I, <clears throat> I would... I'm not sure if there's like a, a way to find out, but um, who other people, how often other people post, but uh, I made a post the other day in Apex and uh, I don't know what sparked me to go hit this button, but I hit the groups tab and I have made 400 posts 
um, by that point in Apex in less than two years. And I was like, oh, okay, wow. that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, and that just builds a reputation of, well, students like, hey, I need you guys to add content here. I need you guys to, to, to help the group and post stuff and comment. Um, so yeah, that's a commitment we so, made. So while we're on that subject then, because I could I could be posting more in there, uh, yeah. especially, in, especially in Entourage. Um, I think I've got plenty to give to the group. Sure. Um, what kind of content do we want to see in there? Uh, re- realistically, anything that Other can be helpful. This. Yeah, <laughs> no, th- this kind of thing is beautiful. But uh, realistically, anything that you, you might consider helpful, I, I'll drop like uh, quotes from books. Like if I'm starting a new book and I'm really excited about it. Uh, recently, I just finished um, Dr. B recommend this one. It's called uh, Fire Starter Sessions by Danielle Laporte. And I'm not, I've read two books back to back that were really touchy, feely, emotional stuff, which is not me. Um, yeah, I struggle I, with those. <laughs> I, I did a, uh, a book I read earlier in the year was a uh, personality profile. And of the six personality profiles, one of them is a feelings type person it's called a harmonizer. That was my least, <laughs> that was my least connected. And I joked with uh, a couple people, another syndicate thing. And we had a little mini book club going on. And uh, I joke with those people because we're reading the same books at the same time. And <laughs> so I'm like, I evidently have no feelings because I, I just scored the lowest on this. So I read two <laughs> books back to back that are all about feelings, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but I'll drop quotes in the books. I'm really excited. That makes about sense. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll think on that. I, I feel like as though like some days I give and give and give and give and give and then I'm tired and then I look up and it's been a week and I've not posted a damn thing anywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. I. I, that's why I have those uh, requirements that I read off. Like I don't know them yeah. by heart. They're literally s- sitting above my desk, so I'll do them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I struggle yeah. with it. It's uh, you yeah. know, I did a message every morning, which is that same idea. I, I got a Bible app that throws me a Bible verse in the morning. Sometimes it just connects, and you're like, yes, yeah. that's my message. Sometimes I'll walk, you know, listen to a podcast, someone else, or I'll see something posted that'll just spark something or a situation yeah. will happen in my life, and that's what I'll talk about. Yeah. And in the beginning, I was actually basically rewriting my live into a long form and putting it out there but honestly it just takes a lot of time and like i just mm-hmm. i already lose a lot of time in the morning doing a ride and by the time i go mm-hmm. ride 10 miles go live you know get on a bike get dressed to go out in the cold come back you know it's like a two-hour process and like i'm losing two yep. hours every morning i'm like i can't spend another half hour making a long form post out of this so i've been slacking on that and i, I yeah like the, more the thing that. the thing is dude you know i pay thousands of dollars a month for podcast production and, and video and media and everything else. And it it costs a lot, but it makes a lot more. And so like that long form post that's costing you half an hour, maybe there's somebody you can hire and train to make those for 12 bucks an hour. And that just be a part of their day. Yeah. Um, because like by having that content and um, just, it, it buys you the authority in the space, but it, it, it does it without force, man. I should, I should get my VA to start. My VA has been reposting. Uh, she peels them off of Facebook and puts them on my YouTube channel, so we can if we can catch a replay on them. But maybe I can get her to, uh, you know, actually, if you put it on YouTube, it, it uh, basically translates it for you, transcribes it for you. So maybe I can have her deal with rough post, and that's a good idea. See, this is how yeah, stuff I'm, happens, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are you the, thinking uh, that? Yeah. I, yeah, I haven't gotten to the point scale wise uh, for me at least for for having a team of someone to do it for me. Uh, which it would be incredibly helpful. It, it would be very, very helpful. The VA's so, uh, helped a lot for that. Um, yeah. I, I kind of jumped into one because I was like, you know, I'm doing a lot of like, you know, a lot of my posting is if I post it in one place, then so if I put it on Facebook, then she'll pull it and put it on Instagram. She'll pull it, put it on LinkedIn. Uh-huh. And it keeps the posting going. I was spending a lot of time copy, paste, copy, paste, change it a little bit, time in the box, you know. Right. And I was just let her do that. And like, so now she's been she's been pulling all the videos off Facebook. She'll pull this off uh-huh. and she'll put this on, uh, you know, Brian Lewis Realtor on YouTube. And uh, yep. I can get all the back episodes and, you know, so she's been doing that, which is a lot of busy work that I would have spent time on. And now it freed up me to go do what I do, go sell and even just spend time with the kids. You know, be, it's like, be that's a creator, yeah. important, you know, I have breakfast with the kids every morning. It's something new that Apex taught me to do. I used to go in the office and not see the kids. I do my ride now. I come back and we have breakfast together with the kids. That's been so a game changer in my life. Something yeah, I've never great. done before because I never... You know, we forget why we're doing what we're doing, right? We're, we're working our asses sure. off to provide for yeah. our family and our kids. And in that process, Absolutely. we're neglecting our family and our kids. And I was totally guilty. Yep. So now, just oh. like everything else, that's part of my day is sit down with the kids and have cereal mm-hmm. with them in the morning and, you know, chat with them a little bit and then move on to my day. My day starts a little bit later on the work-wise, but you know what? It didn't actually because that's important to me. You know, it's more important than the work. 
yeah you want to have that well well-rounded piece there yeah. uh i i agree the um this 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 was a question that was brought up at our last fly on friday sam you probably remember but one member uh stood up and or asked a question to a speaker and is like hey um you know i'm working here you know at, at the job and i go home and do some other stuff and basically what, what he was alluding to is what where's the enough factor where's the yeah. point where we make the switch over here and there and um as soon as that person said that I, I turned to to mark and i said it was interesting is my family wants me more than stuff and they yeah. want me yes yeah they want me more and they care about me more than just you know whatever you know, amount of money that's in the bank or the, what, what, what money does and what i, I think as the entrepreneurs and a lot of us in here are male but uh, there's plenty of female entrepreneurs too that our number in our head i can tell you is far greater than their number mm -hmm. we, we were like okay i want to be hit this and this and this and i write big numbers down in my daily you know journal journal for goal setting and i can tell you it's far exceeds the expectation that uh yeah. my wife daughter and son have it was happier home my daughter tonight we're eating dinner yeah. she's like daddy i love when you have dinner with us and i'm like yeah you know because i'm usually running this event and doing that or whatever and right um you know as you know my story i i basically ruined my marriage over working too much you know and yeah. uh it was kind of the downfall of and i think sam was probably in that boat too and yeah, uh, drinking was, too much working yeah. too much it and, all uh, uh yeah. you know when you were what we think is important isn't important and what is important mm -hmm. we neglect because something we think is is important yeah. you know you can have a million dollars and be all alone or you can be with your family and, and survive and listen we want to do more than survive but at the same time they they'd rather have you than a, you know the fancy car and a fancy house and yeah you know, yeah, we, um, you know, we can go to someplace cool. And I mean, my son loves hotels. Uh, he's been, it's crazy to think his first, he flew before he was even two years old. And which is crazy for my, me and my family, because I was 24, I think, when I flew for the first time, it was a business related trip. So he's been to two other countries, uh, Mexico a couple of times, he's been to Italy, Hawaii. Um, but I can tell you right now that if I gave him the choice of, okay, I have to make a change, son, and we can't go to Hawaii, but I can play Legos with you every day. He'll be like, "Oh, let's freaking let's go, to, let's get the box right now." You know, he'll he'll he'd rather sit and color or play a game. Yeah, can we or, color, yeah. It's big. Yeah, do something with me with <laughs> my, me. Then yeah, my kids' Legos are so complicated. Like, <laughs> I don't build like, them. Like, man. It's like work. <laughs> Dude, I yeah. sat down. I got the instructions, and I started picking out all the parts from the pile and lining them up so we could. They've got these Lego Technics, and they have these cars like this oh, with yeah. engines that work. Oh, the, the motors, and yeah, the gears, it, yeah. It's insane. I love it, but uh, yeah. boy, it, it's it's more of a headache for dad than it is for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your your children would rather. I I, I can guarantee you um, would rather you teach them something, show you something, mm. or show them something, teach them. Uh, be with them side by side, just doing, you know, things around I, the house. Th I restructured my entire business around mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. um, you know, they get under my feet, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I take off every day from, from three when I go pick up Charlie to, to about six o'clock. And I have, I have William and Charlie both. But I pick William up from school at 1230 and <laughs> I have him all day. So, mm -hmm. yes, he gets under my feet, but it's the best time ever because... He's not at school and he's hanging out with dad doing whatever dad's doing. And then mm -hmm. Charlie gets to come as well. Yeah. And for the, for the most part, we, I don't work between three and six. I come back to work for an evening block, but if I've got to do work between three and six, they come with me, you know, they, they yeah. go on, they go on yeah. house tours with me. They'll mm -hmm. come to inspections. They're learning all that stuff. Yeah. What's the song? Uh, Darius yeah. Rucker won't be like this for long. Right. I mean, it goes right, fast, well, you know, enjoy the, it. It's as much as the they're under your feet and sometimes they make you crazy. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be missing it, my, you know, ten years from now. Under my feet, and like, come on, get your things. And it's raining, and they're walking this slowly. But, yeah, <laughs> you know, the the real the real bonuses here, like what it used to be like, is, um, you, you know, they they stay with their mom, they stay with me, but like after work, I didn't have my kids in the evening, so I'd I'd pick them up from school, and I'd sit them down in front of a, a video game, and I'd go back to work. And then they go to their moms and I'd be like, well, wait, I didn't see my boys at all. So by changing my day around, I I would just use the evening time I'd, I'd wasted anyway. So just changing the day around, and I, I, I get my time with my boys. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah Mason, 
Mason comes to the office with me uh, quite frequently. So it's um, can't and, do that with a job. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. If you work for you know X Y Z company, you, you can't mm-hmm. take the kid into the boardroom that kind of thing. Those yeah. entrepreneurs, which most of us are, we had that flexibility. Um, my, my dad worked in the, a government uh, contracted place, so it's not like I could have gone anyway. But um, you know, I never got to see that what, what my dad really did, and you know. So, but on the flip side, for for uh, for Mason, I, I try to include him as much as I can. I uh, you guys have seen him in MDM. Yeah. Uh, I bring him awesome. Apex Live, and uh, you know I'm not going to tag him along with everything we do. You know, I don't take him to fly on Friday or anything like that. But if there's an opportunity for that to come up, um, it, it's a big deal for him. He's going to be at Apex Live on February cool. 3rd to see me speak. You know, and I'm, you know, Sam brought his son once. Ray yeah, William, William loved it. Yeah. He loved yeah. it. Yeah, um, Mark Higdon's another guy who who now brings a, a he's a preteen. I think his son is either you know twelve, thirteen, something like that. So, hey, I got to interrupt. I keep getting notifications that people can't see the podcast. So I went and checked, and uh, Brian, you've got it set to friends only, mate. You need to set it to global so everybody else can see it. Oh. Uh, let's see. I see it in the group. Yeah, it's in the group, but he's set to he's set to his friends only. Uh, you're his friends. So you're seeing the, the group. audience. Oh, oh, I see. Public, yeah, how'd that change? I leave it on public all the time. Facebook likes to mess with me. All right, it should be good now. We got it now? <laughs> cool. I don't know why it does it. Uh, every now and then I have that in my morning message. Like, it goes on, like, private. I'm like, I never change it. It's always on public. And every now and then, it, I don't know. Facebook well, I never, check, I never check my messages, and I had, like, five of them. So, <laughs> like, whoops. Uh, my phone's on silent when I podcast. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, all right. So, um, all right, cool. Um, yeah, the, if I can include him, then I will. And, uh, every, every kid's a little different. I, I growing up for me, I was in, in the sports, like huge. So, you know, my heroes were like Nolan Ryan and, and the Dallas Cowboy guys, Troy Aikman and Smith. So, you know, that was how I just, but th- those guys are completely removed. There's no way I was going to meet. Well, ironically, I did meet Emmett Smith and Troy Aikman, so never mind. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna you typically don't see you know meet the pop stars or actors or yeah, athletes yeah. on tv but mason is not you know much into sports um and so he but he he does like business so for him to meet mm-hmm. you know ryan Stuman or sean whalen or steve weatherford and he loves steve weatherford uh he's met him twice and um for him to meet those people is incredibly that's his those are his celebrity people yeah, but that's how that's how my boy felt when he met you and really? You yeah. Your, you and your book, because you got a yeah. book with a, rock, a rocket guy on the front. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. And then uh, yeah. Dante, Dante got him on stage, gave him a copy of his book. Yeah. Mike, Mike, he's not into sports either. He's uh, into books, and he's into yeah. spread. He's into spreadsheets with a little bugger. You know, That's awesome. he's he's great. But no, he he sees you guys as as people he looks up to, and, and sees you guys as his heroes. So, oh, so that was cool. what keeps me going. Yeah. It, it, cool. it was huge. It was huge for Mason that that I wrote a book, and he read the. Uh, it definitely is pointed to my book's pointed to sales specifically. So Mason, you know, when he reads it, he's okay. This is really it's like completely mm-hmm. doesn't do anything for him. But he did. He read a student book. He read Drewby's book, and he, you know he likes that kind of that kind of stuff. So. It's like, damn, he's looking up to, like, MDM, he meets Ryan, and he meets uh, Vince Reed and uh, Sean Whalen and and, uh, Steve Weatherford. And then a couple months later, I have my book. He just put him, to me, to him, it puts him, like, oh, dad's one of these these people, too. Yeah, it's awesome, yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's like, well, in his world, he's the son of, you know, he's Troy Eggman's kid in our world. You know, so well, it's really cool for him to. We always looked uh, up for our dads. Like, you know, I used to go to work with my yeah. dad every every Saturday. He was get up, go to work with dad from like, as long as I can remember, five years old on. I remember going to work with dad. Yeah. And he had a sheet metal fabrication, you know, business. So he worked for someone in the beginning, but it was kind of a family type place. And then, you know, he had three company of his three companies of his own. So I grew up around it. And I mm-hmm. grew up doing stuff that, you know, I didn't, wasn't into sports. I wasn't into any of that stuff because I used to go to work all the time. I'd go to work with dad and Saturdays, mm-hmm. all summer long, once I was old enough, I'd go spend the summers working in the shop. And 
you yeah. know, his kind of theory was, I'm going to make you sweat it out now so you go get a good job and don't have to sweat it out, you know, don't have a labor <laughs> job later. So I used to get all the hard jobs, all the nasty stuff. Dude, I loved you know. labor. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. I loved oh, it. I loved it too. It's, you know, nothing like a day's work. Come home, you know, sweaty, drenched, and knowing you left it all on the line. It's kind of like the same as, you know, playing football or whatever like that. Um, yeah. You know, hard day's work. You know, you, you feel good mm. about it. Um, but you also no, realize I'm, I'm pretty glad those. Way. I'm pretty glad those young boys are picking up that for us to well, But I think, you know what, I think everybody kind of should have a labor job at some point in their life because it makes you appreciate oh, yeah. the white yeah. collar job, you know, yeah. and, you, and you have a feeling for, you know, I have a great appreciation for blue collar guys that, that bust their ass all day long and that are hot and cold and dirty and, you know, this mm -hmm. is, you know, I, I've been there, I've done it and I can appreciate it and I have much respect for that. A lot of people talk down to, oh, they're just a blue collar worker and, you know, out in the, in the mainstream world and. They're the hardest working people, most dedicated people that are you going to meet. And I think I said one. I think everyone should have a hard labor job at some point in their life, so that makes them appreciate where they want to grow to and to get away from the hard labor. You know, work yeah. smart, not hard. You know, um, but mm -hmm. I think that's part of what's missing in this world today is a lot of people haven't put in a hard day's work to know what they got, to know to appreciate the people that are working hard, to appreciate the you know the public works guys that are out there picking up the garbage and plowing the snow. I mean, that's that's rough stuff. You know. The other day it snowed here, and they they plowed the streets all morning long, and then got put the plows away, got on the back of the garbage truck in the snow, and then collected the garbage. Same guys, and I'm watching these guys work, and I'm just like, man, those guys are dedicated. That is some hard work yeah. out in the cold, plowing all night. Get off the plow truck, get on the back of the garbage truck in the snow, picking up garbage, you know, covered in snow, and you know they're soaking wet and cold, and it's like, and then people talk down to people like that. I have nothing but respect for those guys. Um, you know, and, and, you know, that's a choice they've made to, to stay at that level. And, you know, that's, that's there. And, um, obviously then we try and do everything we can to get away from that level. And that's, you know, kind of why we got to where we are now. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. I think societally we, we keep talking about like degree jobs and these other things that, you know, lawyers, doctors, the, the respect those people get, but, um, we, we would shut down. Yeah very short period of time without a truck driver without so farmers we're having that problem yeah. now right there's a trucking yeah. shortage there's no truck drivers you know that's yeah you know but there's a lot of people that you know have underwater fire prevention degrees you know it's uh it's <laughs> you never heard of that one <laughs> you know but it's seriously you go to some liberal arts college and you get some stupid degree that you can't use like you know like what's the point like you know yeah go to a trade school i love mike Rowe. have you seen mike, mike Rowe? Rowe yeah. jobs he's yeah. got was it yeah. microworks.com i think it is mm -hmm. they give scholarships to trade schools that's yeah. awesome. I mean, if you're an electrician, a plumber, a tin knocker, what, whatever it is, if you're a trade and you get in a union and the benefits you get, I mean, guys are making over $100,000 a year in New York City you know, as construction workers. You know, not that that goes right. far in New York City, but um, that's a good living. You <laughs> yeah. know, that's uh, yeah. for, you know, people come out of college and they make making 50 grand a year. So it's like, I spent all that money on a degree to make 50 grand a year when I could have just gotten into a trade and made 100 grand a year. You know, I think the yep. end game is a little bit further for if you have a degree, but not always. Well, it, it, it might start you up on a, on a, on a platform, but uh, I was talking to my brother-in-law this uh, a couple of days ago when I was when I was out in Alabama, and um, ever since I can remember dating my, my wife and eventually getting married, my father-in-law was just you know, hammering me to get a degree. And I'm just thinking, what, what for? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I didn't set foot in a college. I'm 42. I'm not going to get a degree to do um, at this point, you know? Uh, and that there's not a single, you know, the starting salary whatever and I, I look at what doctors make and i'm like well i'm already above that yeah. why <laughs> yeah. you know what, what am i going to reset for but i guess if it but it does it does do one helpful thing is it does give you a ramp up a potential to start higher um you it know, teaches it, you a little bit how to learn a little way i got an engineering yeah. degree and you know, mm -hmm. I, I, i'm adhd so i'm all over the place i can't concentrate for crap luckily yeah. i'm smart and i can manage to get through stuff and yeah. sit in engineering school, you know, just cranking numbers. And it was just like, this is not shiny at all. Like, you know, yeah. squirrel, you know. So uh, it was tough for me to get through engineering school. But I did it. But it taught me how to how to think, how to actually how to work the system, too. I mean, I used to make friends with old professors, sales. You make friends with yeah. professors, become the teacher's pet. And then they'd, they'd help mm -hmm. you through it and give you extra credit and whatever you used to take. And literally, I used to sell my professors on how you know i was a good dude and you shouldn't pass yeah. me and what not give me a second chance if i failed that test they let me take a retest and you know it was all kinds of stuff i pulled to get through engineering yeah. school and at the end of the day my dad sent me to engineering school so i wouldn't work in the family business and what did i do i went and worked in the family business because 
coming out of school, making 50, 60 grand a year, starting salaries as an engineer, and go machine metal work and make 100 grand a year. It was like, this is crazy. Right. Like, uh, owning like, your own you company. Know, yeah. You know, so no, I, not even just as a, just as an employee of a, a union sheet metal worker in New York City okay. makes over a hundred grand a year. It's crazy. Wow. It's crazy. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, so walking out and getting into a trade, I was making more money. Now I went into drafting and I, I do, uh, you know, AutoCAD drawings and design and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and really at this point now I'm basically full-time real estate. Um, and I've gotten away from that too, because that was, uh, much as a family business, it's just the model of the, the, the risk versus reward uh, so much better in sales, you know, and just making yeah. commissions than it is to, I mean, it's a it's a machine you got to feed, you know, you got to feed the beast because uh-huh. all the time. You build this big company up with you know, tons of employees, tons of trucks, tons of equipment, tons of inventory, and then it gets slow. And then if you don't keep feeding that beast, it eats itself alive. Right. And, you know, like a real estate, you know, if I don't sell houses, I don't make any money, but it doesn't eat me alive. It's a different model, you know, the same thing. You sell insurance. If you don't uh-huh. sell insurance, you know, you don't make money, but it doesn't eat you alive. You know, once you have your own brokerage and you have your own employees, then it could eat yeah. you alive. But, you know, as a as a basically, you know, in a straight commission world, you know, you kill mm-hmm. what you eat. But on the other hand, it, you know, what you eat doesn't kill you if uh, you don't kill it first. Um, you know, That's true. You know, it's, it's a different world when you're in that type of business owner. And I've seen the model. I've seen my dad mortgage the house to make payroll, you know, to try and keep things afloat mm-hmm. and then go bankrupt in the process because that doesn't work. You know, um, yeah, it says all the time. It costs a million dollars, get a million dollar education. It took him third, three tries. So it's, this is his third attempt at business. And, you know, he's figured it out from the first two, what not to do. And this one's been successful. And, you know, we've been going a bunch of years and it's been open since yeah. the late nineties. But, um, but I've seen that model and then I discovered the real estate model and I said, Hey, this is a better way to go. And now I'm building a team there. And, uh-huh. um, and yeah, you, you learn through the process, but really my engineering degree that I went to school for, I don't use it other than it is, it is a, a, um, I don't know, what do you call it? A credential to get in the door places. You know, I went to Stevens sure. Institute of Technology yeah. and in the That's world, all. people know the school in that world. And when I say, Oh, I graduated it, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, you're one of us. It's almost like belonging to yeah. apex. When you see, when someone friends you on Facebook and they say, you know, they're part of apex, you know, I could friend them. I know they're good people. You know, it's that, yeah. that level, level of credit to, to give you the entry, you know, pass to get in. Um, uh, yeah. That, that, I, I, I do see that part. I mean, if, if I was able to have done, you know, law degree or something like that, yeah. I, I would have done that. Uh, that, that'd have been, that'd have been pretty cool. But I picture myself more like a DA, not a personal, not, not, not the personal injury attorney. I'd rather do like a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a DA type thing. You know, put the guys in jail. I, I loved, I love my time in law. I didn't, I don't have a degree. Um, yeah. I, I did industry accreditations in the oil and oh, okay. gas industry. Mm-hmm. And then one day, dude, I was just tired of reading. There's a lot of reading. Yeah. Yeah. I made mid six figures, like super comfortable, but I just was tired of reading shit. And mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to give you something else. I told my broker I was going to take a couple of weeks off, and I never went back. <laughs> no, that's the same thing. It's like taking a test every day. You're reading that, looking for the one word that's out of place and whatever, that one loophole that they're trying to put in there. The same when oh, I'm designing yeah. a job. You know, I'm I'm designing a job, and you know, you know, I got a system of what I'm doing. And someone comes in and talks to me, it breaks your concentration, and you're like, shit, where was I? All right, now I got to start over, and I got to start running my calculations again, and um, and it's like taking a test all day long, and. Um, you know, sales obviously it's a different type of thing, but when you're when you're in that grind and you're in that type of business, it, taking a test all day long is stressful and it's not fun. Mm-hmm. It's not shiny. <laughs> the oh, deals are true. fun. The deals are fun. <laughs> yeah, the deals are fun. Like the sales is fun yeah. when you put a deal together. And, yeah. You know, you negotiate a deal, and even on job sites, you know, like whatever it'd be, um, something that would go on, and you know, I'd make friends with the super on the job and listen, you know. I'm having problems with this. Can you help me out? I'll buy you lunch, like type stuff. That was always the thing. I'll buy you lunch. You take someone to the bar and buy them lunch and give them a couple of beers. They're a friend for life in that industry, you know? So no matter what, hey, listen, can I get my truck in early, you know, like, you know, before everyone else gets here so we get fresh shot at the elevator? Yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll get you in. And that's all sales. Like, it's relationships mm-hmm. that you're building. It's right. sales. Like, you know, how'd you guys get your truck in an hour early? Like, we had to wait online for an hour. Oh, well, you know, I know people here and I got a guy, you know? I got a guy. It's all about that relationships that you're building in any line of yep. work. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, some people who are not that, that plug in, some people who don't use social media in that networking way don't really understand it as much. Like I, you know, I, I'll be on Facebook, you know, doing stuff, you know, working through in the groups and posting whatever kind of thing. And uh, my wife and my son are like, "You're just playing on Facebook." I'm really not. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing something. 
I'm pointed and doing something specific and adding value to a group or I'm connecting with people. It's then, intentional. Yeah. yeah, it's very intentional. And then someone else will say, well, how are you friends with, you know, two, three, five thousand people? You're not, well, you're, you're friends in the regard of you're, you're making connections and you're building relationships. Mm-hmm. And it starts to, you know, there, it does start a one-on-one thing uh, with people like uh, Brian, I've probably seen you maybe a, a couple of times in my life, you know, yeah, since yeah. April of last year, but it's like, Okay, well, I, I know what he does. I know what he, he does. You know what I stand uh, for. I know what you stand yeah, I, for. We know what we're right, about. I know what, you know, yep. Exactly. And you build that, you, that un, unintentional, I guess, relationship that becomes later an intentional relationship when you start yeah. to gravitate toward it. We gravitate towards our like-minded people, right, that we kind of mm-hmm. respect. And, you know, yeah. I say it's an energy, so you, too. Certain people carry this energy, of good energy about them, and you attract mm-hmm. to each other. And you charge each other's batteries, you know. You're happy to right. see each other. You're happy to listen to each other's posts and read each other's books and that type of stuff, you know? Yeah, you, you support those other people. And, um, what, you know, kind of what Sam was talking about earlier, that back in the day, the saloon used to be that way. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, on a micro scale. Yep, yep. You know, yeah, those, yeah, those yeah. people. Um, no, of course, during, before Prohibition, there, there was a, um, a destructive nature of it. You know, guys would literally make all their money, then go piss it all the way at the, at the bar. But, um, um, but... You did. You did do. Yeah. The, uh, I've seen it in you know, documentaries. Stuff like that. Deals were made. Businesses were formed. Uh, families were aligned. You you met. Shoot, maybe you met your spouse there. Maybe you met. You know what would be yeah, your best friend. It still does. What do you do? Right. I've, Thursday night, I'm going out with clients for dinner. I'm going to go hang out, and you know, I've, I've sold yeah. their investors. I've sold a couple of their properties, and I thought I'm going to take you to dinner. Let's see what else we can do with you. You know, and that's you break mm-hmm. bread together, and uh, you build that relationship, and. Next thing you know, I'm their guy. You know, they might not have had a guy, and yep. now all of a sudden, I'm their guy, and they're not gonna go anywhere else because mm-hmm. they're happy working, and we have we have you know we laugh together, we break each other's chops, and it becomes a mm-hmm. you know a little bond there, and uh, you know now hopefully you know anything else that comes up in the future and real estate wise, you know I like working with them, they like working with me, we have fun together, so and you build yep. that bond over breaking bread at the bar at the dinner table, you know, and it's yeah, important, it's... you know, and I think COVID's actually hurt that a lot. Um, you know, Facebook and stuff has helped that because you get to know each other, you know, in a way, but there's nothing like going out and sitting at a table and, and having a couple of drinks and talking about life and, and, you know, you learn a lot about each other and what's mm-hmm. going on behind the scenes and you realize that we're all the same, we're all having the same struggles behind the scenes and had or yep. having the same struggles and, uh, it brings that bond, like, you know, it makes it personal and almost like a family level at that point. Well, that's, yeah. And that's why we have our live events, right? Yeah. Yeah. The lives, yeah, you know, uh, exactly. Hanging out, getting a drink, spilling dinner with somebody, but um, getting, building those bonds also can help you to share the work in some cases too. Like I've seen people do, okay, podcast. Is it easier to have two people to make a podcast? Actually, it's, you know, it's very helpful. Uh, you guys do. <laughs> Sam does. No, it, it, it can be, it can be helpful. It, 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 is. it, it, it is. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I could handle more interviews in a week and having brian on it takes most of the workload off me and i just get to sit here and make faces it's great <laughs> well you know like we push each other because like you know where i might think oh maybe we'll skip this week you know sam's like no we got who's who's on this week and sam may want to skip a week and i'm saying no we got you know brian on this week and you know it's it's, it's back to accountability i think a lot of us uh-huh. you know it's really easy for us to say eh you know, maybe we'll skip it this week, and uh, and it's like no, we can't. There's something we, people are starting no, to rely just, on this. We got to do it. We got to yeah, do it. It's, you know, you got to be consistent, and you know, mm-hmm. and the more consistent you are, the more people rely on you, right? They know what they're getting from you, and uh, I think that's important. You know, to people know. Dude, what that's getting. that's probably a really good note to end on. We should give Brian one more chance to plug his book and plug Apex okay. Live before we get out yes, of here. Yes, yeah, yes. So, um, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Apex Live is February third. Uh, this is the first one of the there year. There, there it is. Yeah, there's the book. There's the book. Yeah, there's the book. Uh, it goes off screen if I open uh, up on my face. Yeah. Uh, it ain't rocket surgery. That came out August of last year. Um, multiple bestseller. That I did that actually at an Apex of Life. And this one coming up, I know there will be a book release. I believe it's Kale Goodman's doing his. Um, I'm hoping to release mine for MDM. That's that's my my goal. That's your deal. That's my okay. Goal. So very cool. I told yeah, Larry, I want to make this happen. Yeah, those are very helpful for if you want to do. Um, if you've got something to, to you get an audience right in front of you, right then and there to do, you know, to listen to you, what you want to talk about. So um, I think it's a cool thing. So yeah, February 3rd, we are doing uh, the Goom Squad edition, meaning uh, all six of us are the speakers this time around. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was a, that came together in a cool, uh, very, very cool way. Um, 
So it, the you know power of syndication and sp uh, the speed of just no having relationships. We literally were in um, in a room with Stuman. <laughs> and you know the six of us just like it was what we were planning on doing like oh yeah we'll just make it the next one that's mm -hmm. it just right there and there that's it yeah. okay well we got the endorsement let's go let's go craft it so, yeah because yeah. you were going to so, do one in the fall i think right uh yeah we tried to put correct we tried to put one together uh but it was literally before it would have been two weeks before um the november apex live so it's hard. Yeah. I mean, I say it all the time. It's like, you know, I was just in Texas two weeks ago for an entrepreneur meetup. Mm -hmm. And then we got this coming on and I'm jumping to uh, Tampa to go to Stacy's meetup on the 18th and 19th. So literally every yep. two weeks I'm traveling pretty far, you yep. know, to hit these events. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to be at these events. It's, it's, you know, why we do this. It's how we make our connections is definitely sure. a lot more value in the live events and, and the dinners and stuff and the, and the coffee sit downs and the cigar nights and all that stuff where we're really, yep. That's where we're building our bonds. I mean, you know, that's, I met Sam at a cigar night. We went for steaks with Thomas and had cigars after. And next thing you know, we're doing this, you know, and yep. yeah, that's how important it is to get to these events. That's what I'm trying to enforce to everybody here. If you, if you haven't been to an event or you're not making the events, get there. Yeah. It's, it's game changer. I mean, you get yeah. so much more out of it once you know people, you know, that's the truth. Yeah, absolutely. You, you get to, you know, that, that physical connection with people that you've only previously seen online. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So I, I tried to, it was the only one I haven't ever made uh, as an executive. And that was because I, I was on a family trip with the exact same day, same time, same date. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome, uh, yeah, awesome time. To it. The six of us, yeah, the six of us have different ways of speaking, different, different styles of how we do it. And um, we just over lunch, um, I guess yesterday, yeah, yesterday uh, went through the cadence of what we're going to do. And it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's so you be the, fun your spouses are doing a speaking part too, right? Oh, that? yes. Yeah. 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 Part of it is a, is a panel. Um, Lori Wren, another Apex executive coach, she's going to lead the panel there, kind of a Q&A &A uh, part. Uh, that's going to get into the spousal uh, support. Is that going to be like uh, a roast or what? <laughs> that'd be awesome. Uh, we're, gonna be covering, that'd be... we're gonna be covering tennis elbow. Or like that. <laughs> that would be cool. No, um, tennis elbow. Uh, so, um, but here, this is the power of actually you know, meeting and communicating. So, uh, one of the wise, um, we were talking about initially the, the the panel. The first thought was, how does a spouse support an entrepreneur? Um, but one of the spouses said, well, you know, there is a, is a, there's a duality there. There's a two way street. How does the entrepreneur not run so fast? Mm. They've left their family behind. 100%. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've been guilty of that with, with, uh, with Natalie to say, oh, oh yeah, by the way, Hey, I've did, been doing all these things. Like, well, just catch me up. Cause geez, I didn't even know that. That's you know, where does yeah, he come from? Write your own book. Damn it. Come on. Yeah. Like, let's so, go. um, but it, it was a good thing for this person. You know, this person brought that up. It's like, okay, that, that's a very good thing, good point to bring into. So that was, you know, we, how do you, how do you A, be in a family as an entrepreneur and then how does the family support the entrepreneur? So it really is two ways. It really is two ways. So uh, that's going to be really cool because like all, all of the six, the ladies up there are able to speak to the different things. And I don't know, maybe some dirt will come out. Maybe some, <laughs> <laughs> but I, Let's yeah. See. So, uh, but I will tell you, no one makes fun of me more than me. <laughs> you'll see that as i speak <laughs> yeah, listen, you know it's it's keeping it real you know like i said I, you know everyone's i've had people come up to you how do you go live every day you just do it like oh what are people going to say i was like people care less than you think and you know yeah. you stumble over your words and you say something silly and it doesn't make sense you're like yeah whatever you know people yeah. don't care it's real it's it's live it's supposed to be raw you know it's uh it's the reason mtv yeah. doesn't show uh videos anymore people love reality you know it's uh yeah. Yeah, same for speaking too. Yeah. Same for speaking. Yeah. Um, there is a uh, an enormous amount of respect and admiration just by being on the stage 100%. Yeah. from the crowd. The crowd it will automatically look and listen for as long as you're you know making sense from you know to, from time to time. Yeah. they'll keep looking and listening to you because connect the dots here and now. <laughs> yeah, it's the number one fear of people. People yeah. are more scared of getting on stage than they are of dying. So when someone is ballsy enough to get on stage and start speaking some stuff, they're going to listen for a minute. Yeah. You think I love think, being on stage. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I love know, training. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I tend to come across more as a, as a trainer, um, which is, which is, which is what I really enjoyed. That's when I first started talking was, I was, it was in trainings and doing, 
doing meetings and training. So that's my number one thing. So when I speak, I've got usually have a PowerPoint, a message to get across. So mine will have a PowerPoint and actual action steps. But I also know that a lot of topics that we could cover aren't the funnest thing. So I, I like to throw in a lot of humor in there and come, you know, come out of nowhere type stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. I love it. I love it. It's yeah. going to be a good time. <laughs> all right. So, well, all right. So, uh, yeah, so that's February 3rd. Tickets, uh, we'll put a link in the um, in the yes. comments on this um, mm-hmm. so that everyone get back on there. If not, DM uh, any of us and we can uh, get you the link for tickets. Mm-hmm. I have uh, my they, tickets. VIP tickets are sold out. A couple left, I think, we got for VIP so, tickets. So, uh there's still some vip space uh, general out, mission yep. general mission is a few of the, yeah the platinum deal was we had to limit it because we're doing a dinner at an at uh at a place so that mm. that's that was limited to literally a head count um so between us and then the people that we that were that bought the ticket that that did get sold out but um that, which is ironic to me well, sorry that ironic which was um it was interesting to me to see that that level went the fastest mm. because uh, a, the price, but also the commitment to do something with us after, but that was part of the attraction too. Like, Oh, cool. I get to break bread. I get to have yeah, fun and a, have a dinner a, with it's these. It's a testament to, you know, what you yeah. guys stand for that, you know, you mean that yeah. much to, to the world that they want to pay to be with you. That's kind of a cool yeah. thing. That's really something, so, you know, yeah, those went very, very quick. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. So that's cool. That's yeah. cool. I like it. Yeah, it definitely is a fun to have dinner with you guys. I can I can attest to that one. I got yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you yeah yeah you you were there in April yeah it's, yeah that uh, was a fun fun night definitely yeah it's six guys who just uh, well actually our wives would be there too that, at that but um it, it's funny it's like to I'll, I'll be speaking, speaking part of this in my speech but just you don't get caught up in the, the junk it's like you just got to stop caring about things yeah, that don't yeah. matter. And, the ball uh, breaking and the fun and you can have to be you know we say it all the time you're having a crappy day and someone hits you with something stupid and you start laughing and it's just like all right you know that broke it broke up the mood a little bit you know let's 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 regroup and laugh and let's yep. start over you know <laughs> exactly yeah it's, it's all about memes at the end of the day that's it that's it if you're not having fun the what's memes. the point that's the way to live life keep having fun memes huh? memes are plenty yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right i gotta get out thanks of here, guys all right Brian, where else can they find you it's uh brian mckittrick.com is a website yep. that links you to everything uh-huh. um so yep. uh-huh. there and facebook and all over the world and, all the uh, stuff go find brian yep. he's good go buy his book amazon all right all right guys we'll be back next monday right yeah, next, next Monday. Monday. Um, right. What are we get on next week? I was just trying to get more. Let, on. let him yeah. go, poor yeah. boy. He's, he's, he's just flown back from Cancun. That's it. Know, that's it. Listen, you know, he's uh, he's got to put the work in now. You know, he, he was laying yeah. on the beach all this time <laughs> drinking tequila. You know. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you next week. All right, guys. I appreciate you all. Thanks. Let's this up here.